Hey everyone, Paul here. Today I'm going to be talking about a moving average strategy. Uh, this one, I, I use it for Forex, I use it for my trading, and this is, well there's really two moving average strategies that I go between, but this is, this is one of them. The other one I've already talked about on this channel, but I will do another recap tomorrow. Uh, but today, this is relatively new. I haven't really talked about this moving average strategy. It works really well, and uh, it's basically the the it's it's the most common moving averages that are out there. So this is going to be the it's the ten, the twenty, and the fifty. And I'm going to show you the method that I do now. Uh, you can alternate between ten, twenty, fifty, or ten, twenty, two hundred. So. You know, if you want to go between the 50 moving average or the 200 moving average, uh, I'll explain in this video what the 50 and the 200 are really used for. Uh, but uh, let me just explain. Uh, this is going to be an example of doing Forex. But you can also do this with the stock market and crypto as well. But today I'm, I'm, all, I'm going to be using this for demonstration purposes on doing it with Forex. And particularly using this as a formula to past challenges but you know overall if you want to do better in forex this is what i'm going to be this this is what i use the strategy for so i'm going to load up the chart and i'll show you how to get started okay so let's look at a couple examples here now i do this on the five minute i think it works the best for forex now what you want to do you want to set up your three smooth roads you want to have it set to 10 20 50 now, like I said, you can either do 50 or 200, but to, for the today's video, I'm going to be talking about 10, 20, 50. These are pretty much the most common uh, moving averages that you can do. Uh, there, there's going to be a couple. I'm going to talk about 10, 20, 50 today, and tomorrow will be another one. And I might go over another one as well, but uh, that's pro probably what I'll be talking about the last three days, next three days. But anyway, once you have that set up, you want to, the formula is really simple. I hook this up with the, uh, with the RSI. And right now I'm looking at the British pound. And I'll be looking at, we'll look at a couple, we'll look at a couple Forex pairs to just get a general idea that this works for both. Now, what you want to do, there's different ways to, there's like maybe two ways of making, uh, your signal here. Uh, Basically what you want to do, the first thing you want to look for is when the 10, the 20, and the 50 are collapsing, where they intersect with each other. And what you want to look for is basically the intersection, like what you have right here. And then you want to make sure your 10 and 20 are kind of going in that direction, but they're going straight. They're not, the 10 and 20 are not colliding with each other. You can see that they're uh, they're coming out of the collision. They're coming out of the collision, and the the other two uh, moving averages are are appearing straight. They're going in that direction. So this is after after a traffic accident has happened, and the path is cleared, and the cars are going in the direction they need to go. That's where you got to look at it. So. Once you see that the 10 and the 20 are going in that direction and going straight, it's more than likely that uh, the, the pattern is going to follow that trend. So what you want to do when you want to do your entry is you want to wait for the collision. You want to make sure both lines are going straight in that direction, either up or down. And then this is very important. When it, if it's going down, you want to make sure that your RSI is going down too. You do. This is a uh, this is a bad trade if it has collided. The lines are straight down or up or up, and your RSI is in the opposite. Your if you're in a downtrend and your RSI says up, it's above the yellow line. That's a bad trade. Do not take it. Uh, if you're going in a downtrend like this, make sure your RSI and the purple line is below the yellow line. And if the collision is going up, like let's see, if the collision is going up, make sure your RSI is above the yellow line. Or it has to, it has to look like it's not going to collide and go in the other direction. You got to make sure you check for that. So 
we're going to do a couple scenarios here. Let's just say you got in during the collision. You, you're on the five minute here and you see, you see the line starting to go straight. So right around here you would take your entry point and you would enter here and you would just write it out. So what I do really is when I find my entry point, I double check and I make sure that the RSI is in that direction as well. And basically my exit point is basically when the RSI has, is gonna, it's gonna start touching and go past the yellow line. That's basically my, my exit point. Like right here would be my exit point. So this is my entry right here. This is a 245 pip, so that would have been that would have been based off of your lot size. So if you did a ten dollar lot size, uh, you would have made about 2,450 there. So let's look at a couple of other scenarios here, and I want I'll do a couple more with a British pound, and I might do a couple other uh, forex pairs. So now you might be in a situation here where with the 50. What the 50 and the 200 represent is it tells you, uh, it basically tells you the overall direction of uh, what it's doing. So uh, if you if it's a while before you have to wait before the the collision point, if you want to um, if you want to get in a trade, you got to make sure that the 50 or the 200, whichever one you want to pick. You got to make sure when the 50 or the 200 is above the other two lines, it is a downtrend. When the 50 or the 200 is below the other two lines, it is a uptrend. So if you need to wait for a uh, for the signal or collision, what you can do is basically confirm. Okay, so you see this line right here. It, this is a confirmed downtrend because the uh, 50 or the 200 is above the other two lines. So if you want to get in a trade before a collision, just make sure that the line of the 10 and the 20 are crossing in that direction. So if this is a confirmed this is a confirmed downtrend, make sure you're confirming that the 10 and the 20 are crossing down. So if you want to get in another trade like that, that's you you have to wait for the 10 and 20 to cross and the same rules apply as in the collision. You have to see that the lines are moving straight. So that is in that scenario. This isn't a scenario that if you know it hasn't collided in a while and you want to get in on a trade. So if we can see this as an example right here. We hide it here. We see the 50 is above the other two lines. That's a confirmed downtrend. And we can see that the we can see that 1020 is crossing down. We can see that it starts straightening out right around here. And we can see that that point there is, the, it, it's below the yellow line on the RSI. So from here, I would have guided my trade right around here because that's when it starts straightening out. And I would have gone around here and wrote it out till the RSI reached the top, which was 100 and, that's 123 pips. And you got to make sure that when you're doing your trade, because there's certain fees involved, so you, uh, you got to make sure that, you know, there's certain fees when you do your trade, so you got to make sure you have enough to cover those fees. It's another reason why I don't really like doing it on the five minute, because you could find yourself in a, a short trade uh, and be attacked with those fees. But uh, if you do it on the hour, you're more likely to find more volatile times and uh, you could reach your drawdown. So uh, I just try to get lucky with the, the five uh, minute and see if there's a, a big scalp that you can get. So anyway, I'm going to do this. I'll do this one more time with the British pound and then we're going to look at some other uh, forex pairs. So we see a collision happening right here. And then we wait for it to straighten out. And we look at our RSI, and at this point, we can see that the RSI is below the yellow line. So that would be a signal for me to get in a trade. I'd come in right about here, and then I'd ride this out until the, until the RSI starts going above the uh, yellow line. So we're going to ride that out. 
let's see we'll go right around here get in right around here and ride this to the bottom and this is about a 540 pip move okay let's look at let's look at the japan dollar here see if this works and it works just the same let's just backtrack here now this is where it gets kind of choppy because when you do it on the five minute you're gonna see a lot of those up down up down movements so you got to be careful and so what we see right here you see it happening right where well, the collision the collision happened where the collision the collision hadn't happened here that's fine where all three of them have to collide with each other let's find a collision okay so it collides right here and we want to wait for the 10 and 20 to kind of straighten out so you could get that out right now you can get it out let's see where does it straighten out right about here straightens out about here so you can get a trade well actually this is a this is an example of a, a bad trade. For now, you see that the uh, it collided and it's going up, but you can see the RSI is below the yellow line. So th this signals a bad trade. So what I would do is I'd either, I'd keep my eye on it, and I'd see if the RSI ever crosses, you know, if the RSI crosses through the yellow line, if that, if that does it, if, what you want to do after the collision, just make sure the RSI, and you can wait on the RSI to be above. You need to wait for the RSI to be above the yellow line. So that, that point is still right here. You would come in right here, and you'd enter right here instead, because you can see that the 10 and the 20 are still straight, but I would not enter right after the collision in that, in, in that trade right there. Let's go back and look for another collision point. Okay. So it collides right here. You need to wait for it to straighten out a bit. So you would come in here. And then you would ride it out. And you see that the RSI is still, still on the uh, bottom. It doesn't collide till about right here. Now this is a 576 pip move. The whole purpose of looking at the RSI is to prevent yourself from, you know, if you're doing 4X and you're trying to do a contract. Uh, the, the whole point of the RSI is to help you prevent any kind of major moves from happening, to stop that from happening. Let's look at a couple more here. Let's do a couple more. Let's find another collision. There's a collision right here. It starts straightening out right about here. This looks a little dangerous to me because, well, if I was doing the trade, I would see that it, it's the uh, RSI is a little bit above. And, you know, I personally wouldn't take that trade because you would, you probably wouldn't be able to catch it. It's a, it's a small trade. I'm going to do one more with J Japan, and then I'm, I might look at Australian. So we gotta find a collision point. Here we go, here's another one. This is not one I would take personally uh, because you personally have to wait for the, the 50 or the 200 to kind of get out of the way and you know it clears the path. So right around here where it's like in the middle and everything's choppy, you don't get in the, at, at this time, you get when it, it get it when it starts clearing up, which is right about here. So this is when you would get in. So you wait for them to straighten out, and then you would look at this point, look at your RSI, and you could get in here, but it's kind of iffy at this point right here because the RSI looks like it's going to pass through the. Uh, so th this is a very choppy trade. One one thing I do not like about the five minute is you're you're more vulnerable to all the when you're you're forced to look you're forced to look at the candles a lot more and it, and you might get a little more nervous on the five minute compared to if you do it on the hour. 
But if you did it on the hour, and let's just look at the hour. I'll do this for... I, I like doing it on the hour, but you're also... Um, you're also... Uh, you take a lot of those volatility moments because you get in on the hour. But you'll get more, so it all depends. You'll get more out, out of your... Out of your if you get a good run, you'll get more uh, pips. But anyway, let's find a collision point. I'm going to do this twice. Okay, so we see this. Uh, this is why I like doing it on the hour. But you got to keep your you you got to keep alert for all this uh, change of direction. So just keep your eyes open for that. But anyway, we see it colliding right here, and we look at the R sign. We see that's above the yellow line. So this would be a good point to get in right about here. So if you got in right about here and you keep looking at your side, right, it's above, it's above. And you get out right about here. So this is 11 hours. Now to hold this for 11 hours, it, you get you get a little bit nervous because anything could happen. It could go, uh, you know, you know, you get a little nervous doing it on the hour because you you'd be subject to catch one of those big uh, changes in direction. But anyway, this is a 332 pip move. Let's do this. I'm, I'm going to do this maybe I'll do this two more times. Got to find a collision point. Let's just skip all that there. My little drawings. Let's do this moment right here. Okay, we see uh, the 50 cross and everything, and we wait for it to straighten out. So we probably would get in on this candle right here. Uh, let's see. And this one's kind of iffy because it's getting close, and it could change direction. But if you rode this out to this one to this one, and you got out, even if you got out when uh, it crossed right here, you'd still be good. It's a 324 pip move. So let's just do one more time here. One more example on the hour. Wait for a collision. It collides right here. So what we want to do, we want to check the RSI. And probably would have come in. You got to wait for them to straighten out. So you would... Uh, if you came in here... I mean, look at the RSI. If you came in here, it's below... It's below the uh, yellow line, and that that's not something you need to do because that's going against the trend. So you'd have to wait for it to cross on the RSI. That moment would be right here. So the point of getting in would be right about here. So you would ride this out, and it, it'll, as long as the RSI is above the line, you're good. And that's a 722... Uh, pip move. So anyway, th I like doing the uh, 10, 20, and 50 uh, moving average method. It works really well for Forex, but I personally like it best with the doing it with the one hour. So anyway, I find the strategy really effective doing the 10, the 20, and the you know the 50 or the 200. It, it's on personal preference. Uh, you know, if you set it at 200, you might wait a while for, for it to collide. So if you want to rotate between 200 and, and 50, uh, you, you can find the collision faster if you do it on the 50. Uh, but basically, the whole principle is the same. You wait for it to collide, wait for it to straighten out a little bit. Then look at your RSI. It has to be, the RSI has to be in the same direction that the uh, collision is happening. So... It's a very helpful strategy. There, there's pros and cons to doing it on the five minute. The five minute, you're really looking at, you'll you'll look at more choppy moments, and you'll you'll be you have to look at the candles more, and it, you get a little bit more more nervous looking at it on the five minute. But then again, if you do it on the hour, uh, you you're gonna risk the moments of uh, you know, like major shifts in direction. So you got to keep your uh, I open that uh, open for that, but if you um, if you just keep your eye on the, the collision point, wait for it to straighten out, look at the RSI, and it it should put in some pretty good results if you're doing forex with this. Uh, 
it's one of my favorite new strategies. So anyway, if you guys like this method, uh, it, it'll work for forex. It'll work for uh, it'll work for the stock market, and it also uh, will work for crypto. But I find that it works the best for forex. But anyway, if you guys like this video, make sure to the like button, hit the subscribe button. I'll see you guys in future videos.